this is pretty incredible and something you don't see every day. We have a turtle on our property who is laying eggs. Good luck, mama. We now have a box turtle laying eggs near our house as well. I have never really seen one turtle lay eggs, much less two. And this is the second one this week. Welcome back everyone and thank you for joining me again. This week we're going to focus on making the stairs that will go from our road down to the deck that we've been making the past few weeks. In this video I'll show you some tips and tricks how you can get your stairs to be perfect every time without fancy tools. And I'm also going to show you a couple of ways that I saved some money on this, but I still feel like I'm ending up with a solid set of stairs. So let's get to work. To get started, I'm gonna make a jig to lay out my stringers. I don't have to do any fancy calculations because I'm not working with any specific parameter. If you need information on how to do that, there's plenty of videos on YouTube that can help you figure that out. But what I wanna do is make a jig so that I can get a perfect seven inch rise and 11 inch run on every stringer when I lay out my marks on my two by 12. To get started on the stairs, I need to lay out, to get started on the stairs, I gang plane airplane up there somewhere. To get started, I need to lay out my stringers on this 2x12. In order to make sure that I get a perfect 11 inch run and 7 inch rise for every stair, I'm going to make a simple jig out of some scrap wood. Since all my stairs are going to be exactly the same, with an 11 inch run and a 7 inch rise, I need to rip this board down to 7 inches. Right now it's about 7 and a quarter inches. The first thing I did is rip my board down to seven inches wide, which is the height of the rise on each tread. I also took the time to cut a perfect 90 degree edge on the end. Next, I'm gonna measure down 11 inches, the length of each tread. Then I'm gonna draw a mark from my 11 inch line down to the corner of my board. The last thing I'll do is cut along this line with my circular saw to get my stair tread cut out. To complete my jig, I'm gonna take a scrap piece of two by four and screw it to the angled portion of the jigging my bobber thing. Lost my bet, losing my mind. And that is what our completed jig looks like. You can see the plan on my fancy drawing. We need to have eight stairs, but that means I actually need seven treads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna lay these out on the two by four using the jig. Now I can take my jig, lay it against the edge of my board and trace out my stairs. Once I've traced out a stairs, I move it down to the next point and trace out the next one. I'll do that all the way down the board until I have enough stairs for my project. Is I don't have something's in the woods. The great thing about a jig like this is I don't have to calculate any funny angles or have any fancy tools. I simply need to know the height of my riser and the length of my tread and a little bit of scrap lumber to make it easy to lay out my stairs. One common mistake when making stair stringers is not taking into account the thickness of your tread material when you're cutting the bottom rise on your stringer. The bottom stringer sits on the floor below it, but when you step up, you're stepping up the height of the stringer plus the height of your material that you're putting on your tread. In this case, I am using one inch decking. Since that decking is one inch wide, I'll cut one inch off the bottom of this bottom tread on my stringer to make sure that every stringer after that is exactly the same height. Now that I've got all my treads laid out on my stringer, I'll use my circular saw to cut this out very slowly. The blade of the circular saw is round, so it's not gonna cut them out all the way. And I don't wanna go past these corners or it could weaken my stringer. So I will have to finish this up with a handsaw or a jigsaw. Another tip when I'm cutting something like this out, I find it's easier to cut all in the same direction first and then come back and make the rest of my cuts in the other direction. Now I've got one stringer laid out just the way I like it. I can use this to mark my layout on the other two stringers needed for this project and cut them out the same way. I've got my three stringers cut out. I have about five and a quarter inches between my cut and the edge of my board. My staircase is right on the edge. Could use four and it would be overkill. 
three stringer should be just fine, but I want this to be rock solid into the future. It's no surprise that lumber prices are skyrocketing right now. And if I use another stringer and go with four stringers, that's gonna cost me another $35. So what I've decided to do is add a two by four to the bottom edge of my center stringer. I'll attach this with some structural screws and it'll help with any flex that may have happened and keep this thing rock solid. It's also gonna save me about $30. Here you can see I added the two by four to the center of the bottom stringer using structural screws. That should save me about $30 and make sure that there's no flex in this stairway. There's one more thing I need to do before I take these down to the lake and get them fitted. I wanna put some joist tape on the top of each tread on the stringer. I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. The risers will not have any material on them. They're gonna be open. This is an outdoor staircase. This is number two pressure treated pine, so it should do just fine outside. However, over the years, as I go to do maintenance on this staircase and put coats of protectant on it, it won't be really easy to get underneath each tread without taking them off. So this is just a little bit of insurance that my treads will stay strong throughout the years. I'll put a link in the description to the I'll put a link in the description below to the material that I'm using on here. One last detail to think about if you're gonna do this for your project. I did take the time to figure out which stringer is gonna go on the left and which one's gonna go on the right. This tape is about three inches wide. So if I were to put it down the center, there'd be an overhang on the outside edge that you would see. In order to prevent that, I just take a little extra time to line the tape up on the edge of my tread so that it won't be seen on the outside when you're looking at the staircase. From there, I can just take the extra and push it down towards the inside where you won't see it. Okay, we're down by the lake and I'm standing on the road looking down at the deck and you can see where our stairs are gonna go. They're gonna come up to some sort of landing that's gonna fall in this place that will be a boardwalk that will lead to the road where I'm standing. Not really sure what the next steps are gonna be. I think I'm gonna attach these stairs to the rim joist that will be on that boardwalk and get them attached. And then I can temporarily brace them in place to find out where that boardwalk's gonna go in the foundation for everything. Okay, I hope this is making a little more sense. So I've temporarily fastened my stairs to the post here, to the joist up there, and put some temporary bracing in place to hold it square and level while I figure out where I need to dig the post for the boardwalk that will lead to the road up there. The next thing I'm gonna do now that I've got this laid out roughly where I want it, I need to dig some footers for that boardwalk. One thing you can do is use your chalk line. I'm just using a regular chalk line here as a plumb bob. So I'm putting it right where I want my post to end up for my boardwalk and I'm letting it hang down. And I know that right here is where I'm gonna need to dig my hole for my footer. So I'm not gonna cover this too much in this video other than I'm going to dig some holes really deep in the ground, fill them with concrete, put some pour in place um, four by four post base in the concrete and let them cure and then that will be the foundation for the boardwalk that will support these stairs on the top side. From here on out I'm just going to dig some holes and once we've got the footers in place I'll show you how it's going. But if you would like more information on how I did this and how I laid it out for the deck it's going to be very similar. I'll leave a link in the description below for that video. This right here is the stuff they don't teach you in school. The screw box tipped over and I'll be spending the next few minutes picking all these up. So I've triple and double and quadruple checked everything. The staircase is in a pretty good spot. That's about where it's gonna be. The next thing I need to determine is where this landing is gonna end over here. So what I've done is so I make sure that I get a perfectly square measurement. I clamped my speed square to the rim joist and then I'll take some scrap lumber and hold it level against that and determine where it ends up on the other end. All right, I'm in the process of getting these footers poured and wouldn't you believe it, a bag of concrete rolled down the hill and knocked my screws over so I get to play that game again. These footers have had a few days to cure. Now I'm gonna set my four by four post in place. All right, I got three of the posts in place and I'm working on this last one. And I did come up with a method that seemed to help while working alone. I temporarily clamp the post in place with a clamp into the bracket. And that allows me to make sure that it's plumb and square and check all my measurements before screwing it in place. You can also see that some of the bottom of these posts were unlevel. 
So I used some outdoor shims to shim them in place while I screwed. I've got this joist marked up so that I can see what it's gonna look like. What I need to do is scribe a line seven inches down from the top because that's how far our rise is on our stair. And that's where I want the top of my stringer to be set against nice and level. To make this easy, I'm just gonna use a string line. Since I need exactly seven inches and my speed square is seven inches, I'm gonna line up my string line on one side right at seven inches. I'm gonna move it to the other end put it right at the bottom of seven inches and snap my line. That'll give me a reference point to work off of from here on out. Now that I have everything lined up the way that I like it, I'm gonna screw that joist in place using some structural screws. I have my joist screwed in place with some structural screws. There'll be one more six inch structural screw that'll go all the way through the two by four into some blocking that I'll do later. You can also see I added another two by 10 just below that so that the stair stringers have some support. Typically, I wouldn't use a two by 10 for this. I'd use a two by six, but that piece of two by 10 is really short. It's really warped. It had a crack in it. It's just not a great piece of lumber, and I'd rather put it to use than throw it away. The next thing I wanna do is get those stair stringers attached to that rim joist. I have my stair stringer supports in place. I took some time to lay out where each stair stringer will need to go then screwed in the Simpson stair support with structural screws at the top of the line. One thing to note is that there's a bunch of holes on each side of these, and that's simply so you could flip this bracket if you want. Just take some time to make sure that the part that you're gonna to attach to your stair stringer is on the inside of the stair so it won't show, and it'll look a little nicer. You can see over here, the bracket is flipped upside down, but it still offers the same support. One last thing to note, if you are gonna use structural screws instead of nails to attach your stringers, you will have to notch around the screws in your stringer so it sits flat against your joist. I've now got my stringer where I want it. I put in some screws here, and I'll just take this bracket and bend it up and put some screws on the bottom to support the underside. As you can see on the bottom, there are a lot of holes on this bracket that are left unscrewed. Those are just so if you wanna flip this bracket to the other side. For structural support, you only need one screw in the bottom. I have everything screwed in place with structural screws. Everything's nice and level, and it looks really good. For my first time building a staircase, there's a couple of things that I would change in the future. But overall, I'm really, really happy with how this is turning out. All right, I got my blocking end down here on the deck. I've got everything nice and secured to the deck. I added some additional blocking about halfway up the stairs. I don't know if that was necessary or not, but it seemed to add a little bit of rigidness and support and keep everything square. Okay, I got my boardwalk structure in place up here to the road. Just the main framing to support that staircase to keep everything nice and solid before I start laying the treads. The next thing I'm gonna do is cut the treads. They're all gonna be 47 inch long and I need 14 of them. All right, the best way to do this would be with a miter saw set up with some sort of stop block to get all the cuts exactly the same. I don't have the luxury of that here, so I am gonna cut them all by hand. What I've done is I made sure to cut off the end of the very first one, just like an eighth of an inch to make sure it's nice and square. I measured it down to 47 inches. I'm gonna mark this one with a T. This is gonna be my template, and I'll use this to describe the rest of my boards. I am using a speed square to keep my circular saw straight. The next thing I'm gonna do is get these treads screwed in place. For that, I'm gonna use the camo system that I used on the deck. This system allows you to get a perfect 3 16 inch reveal between your deck boards and provides hidden fasteners even for pressure treated lumber. I recommend you use this on your project the next time you're building a deck. To get one, just click the link below. If you want more information on how this works, I'll leave a link to a video down below where I did some decking for our deck. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I get these screwed down, leaving a, a nice even reveal on each side, and then we'll come back and we'll see what the results look like. This is where I'm gonna leave it off for this video. I finished cutting around the post for these last two stairs. I use similar methods that I used when creating the deck. I'll leave a link to that video down below if you're interested more in how to cut around post. Overall, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. This is my first staircase and it was a lot of work. It was a little bit more of a challenge than I realized, but overall it turned out really, really nice. It's not perfect. There's a couple of small little things I would change, but overall I have a very solid, sturdy staircase. I'll be able to use some of the lessons that I learned in this project 
to go the other 100 feet down to the dock. I want to thank you again for watching the videos and help support my channel. It really means a lot to me. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button down below if you're getting value out of these videos. And be sure to click the little bell notification so that you get notified when I make new content. Thank you and have a great day. Mm -hmm.